inspiration behind this color scheme. That guy right there is a baby Helgramite. And that is what we are going to be mimicking today with this little guy, the sweet and sour Paradigone nymph. And it's a really straightforward pattern. You've just got 210 denier, an olive, a brighter olive thread. Wrap it on, chop it, kind of phrase a little bit, but uh, I use the 210 just so it gives you a faster body build. Um, you can use less wraps and get this thing done faster. So now we have our bead in place, and now we're going to grab our tail, which is going to be a mallard flank. Uh, nothing fancy about these feathers. You just grab it by the base, pull off maybe a dozen or so, and your right hand grabs the tips. Your left hand straightens them out pretty good, and you just rest it right on top of the fly. And I do two or three wraps down on top of those just to get them pretty good into place and then to get them a little bit shorter I will with my right hand just tug on those the stem of it and get that yeah I like it about right there then we're just going to wrap that all the way up to the bead and that's going to give us a really good even body and I'll tuck that extra into the bead that way it doesn't come up when we put resin on this thing. Chop it off. And everything's looking good. You want that to be, uh, the body to be as even as possible. Uh, so we, I took a counterclockwise spin on this bobbin, which kind of flattens the thread down a good bit. And just did the same thing there. So we go back to the butt of the fly, and then now up to the bead. And all that does is just gives you a nice even body. And then we're going to come in with this second thread color, which is darker. And instead of it being 210, this is 70. And I'm just going to wrap right over that. Not quite halfway, because I'm going to trim off both the tag of the 70 and the 210. And do a couple more wraps to secure, make sure none of those tips are exposed or else it'll do something funky when you put the, the resin on here in a bit. Now it's just pearl tinsel. I always use large. Just I liked it to be a bigger wing case as opposed to medium, but you can use whatever. I mean use like red, that sort of stuff, but I like the pearl the most. Uh, and uh, this pattern, you're just gonna tie this in by the tip and Take it not quite all the way back to that color change from the dark um, dark olive to the light olive, um, but pretty close. A little bit closer than that. And just keep folding it to make sure that it's going to fold properly. And I'm going to wrap that. And I kind of hold that tinsel loosely for that first wrap just to make sure that it doesn't fold over or do something funky. Then secure it in. And I throw a Thread wrap in front, thread wrap behind, that secures it pretty good. And I'm going to come in with my scissors, and these aren't my good scissors. But what I do is I just, I don't know, maybe these won't even work. Uh, Alright, swap out scissors. Okay, so I just put a little cut in it, and then I actually just pull that tinsel. And pulling it makes it, for whatever reason, a, a cleaner cut. I've I've done a bunch of different ways to try and secure that. I used to fold it backwards and, you know, all sorts of crazy things. But I found you just literally tie the stuff in. And once you put the resin on it, it never really comes undone. But we put in one foot finish and now the second. And I'm just always being conscientious of what's my buildup of thread behind the bead. Um, but that's everything's looking good. The these These beads have a little bit of a bigger back slot, but that won't matter here once we put our thin solares. This is the stuff that I use on pretty much all of my uh, flies that require resin, and this is how I do it. I just dump some on like a plastic container. In this instance, it's a fly line. Uh, this is what's a musky line. It's on the reel, so it's relevant now. So, put a little bit in, then I grab my handy bodkin. And I'm just going to dab that up on the head and just kind of kind of let that soak in for a little bit. 
Then I get a second wrap and I'm going to start leveling that all the way around the fly. Just lightly touching everything and that's going to give you a really even, strong uh, resin just all the way around it, which helps fly be more durable. It also sinks a whole lot faster too. Then we're going to zap it with the Loon UV light, and this sucker does a really good job of just roasting that stuff and making it be super tack free and everything. And that, that's the nice thing about using that light uh, in particular. It's not cheap, but it gets the job done better than most of the other ones that I've used. And I'll just come back in, I'm going to fill, and need a little bit more, nice glob, and I'm just going to fill in that hole and then zap it again. And then that will really help it sink quicker because there's no air bubble that can get trapped because this fly will float upside down. Uh, it's tied on a jig hook. But this is the fly, I mean, that's the finished thing, that absolutely wrecked on a Virginia um, stream just this past weekend. And cool thing that I didn't mention earlier, but I put it on this plastic stuff because you can zap it, and then once you're done, just pops right off and you can throw the excess away but that is the sweet and sour paradigm nymph works really well